Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and now that we've had some time to use the latest Pro iPhones, the iPhone 14 Pro series have been a bit of a mixed experience depending on who you ask. However, even after six months, I still think the iPhone 14 Pro is the one to get, with a few exceptions. It's typically what I recommend. Now the overall design is quite familiar, let me go ahead and remove this case here that I typically protect it with. We'll set that aside. The overall design is just a small change from last year's phone with the 13 Pro. We've got some bigger cameras, we have slight weight and size differences, but it's not so much that you'll notice, but you will need a different case for it, which is a bit annoying if you're coming from older phones. It's just a small change from the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro, but the overall design is really nice and probably the one to get if you don't need that larger display. It really feels great in the hand, it's easy to use, and it's great to just easily reach across the display. This is something that I think every time I pick one up, I think this is what I should be using 100% of the time just because the design feels perfect for this size. As far as overall durability, while I use this phone regularly for video and more, I typically have my iPhone 14 Pro Max that I use full time. However, my wife uses one full time and she has a 14 Pro and it's held up really well. In fact, she dropped it just today before filming this video and it's held up fine. The case held up fine. It did get a nick in the case, so she switched that out, but overall it's held up really well. The overall stainless steel around the outside edge does seem to hold up well except for if you don't have it covered with a case it does tend to get a few little scratches here and there but if you have a case covering it that's not really an issue so in general it holds up very well and the camera has held up well also so this is something she's actually had since new the launch day this is a launch day iphone 14 pro and no scratches or anything anywhere the lenses on the glass for the back of the cameras or the sapphire depending on how good of sapphire it is either way is held up really well and of course if you have a screen protector on the display it's going to hold up well in general so no real issues there it seems to be a great and durable phone unless you're very clumsy of course you could ding up the stainless steel but being that it's stainless steel it's more durable in general to maybe things like bumps and scratches before we talk about overall battery endurance as far as battery health and overall battery life we need to talk about charging the iphone doesn't charge any differently than last year really but we still have lightning of course we have magsafe and qi wireless charging but the overall battery capacity has changed and should help with battery life overall it has a 3200 milliamp hour battery and i've always charged my phones at night when i go to bed i use it throughout the day if i'm in the car i'll put it on the charger and i make sure optimized battery charging is enabled since Apple added that feature some time ago. It charges up to 80% and then by the time you wake up it's at 100% and you're ready to go. Of course since Apple still doesn't supply a charger in the box you'll have to decide what to use and that's where today's sponsor comes in. Today's video is sponsored by our channel partner Anchor. Anchor recently announced a sustainability plan called Recharge the Future to work toward being carbon neutral and reduce pollution. Anchor is already certifying some of their products as carbon neutral this year that I have here with chargers, docks, and cables. As one of the first charging brands to go carbon neutral, Anchor is also donating $50,000 to Oceana to protect marine life and habitats. Anchor is also giving a discount off the products in this video until the end of April. Be sure to check them out in the description below. Now as far as battery health, I thought we We'd take a look at my wife's phone. She got this on launch day when the iPhone 14 Pro launched and this has been used full time every single day so it's had some good usage to it. In fact if you look at coconut battery here it's had 168 cycles which is actually more than I have on my 14 Pro Max and if we go into battery health You'll see here battery health and charging we're still at 100% capacity. This is charged the exact same way I charge my phone on the same charger the same style charger and everything using basically MagSafe and then just charging it at night and it's actually holding up better. I don't know if that's because I use betas constantly on my phone where sometimes they're not as good with battery but you can see here on the Pro Max it's actually got worse battery health. So this has 162 cycles where my wife's phone has 168 and it's actually holding up better than the Pro Max which is a little bit odd. But either way that's what it's getting. As far as overall battery life if we go over the last 10 days you can see my wife doesn't use it a whole lot. In fact 
yesterday, just one hour and 38 minutes of screen active time and two hours and 59 minutes of screen idle time, giving her about 50% battery. Now I did have someone send me in their battery life and they're getting about five to six hours of screen on time. Most people with these phones with regular use will get about five to six hours. It just depends on what you do from day to day, but depending on your overall usage, it will vary greatly. So it's really going to depend on how you're using the phone, but still it's holding up well after all this time. But it seems to be declining faster as far as battery health than previous phones, at least with the Pro Max, but the Pro's holding up well for some reason. Now the display of course is Apple's best display they've ever put on a phone. It always looks great, it's super bright up to 2000 nits, and that's in bright sunlight, great HDR, and of course it's holding up well. It doesn't look any different, we don't have any shifts in color, there's no ghosting on the display, nothing like that, and it's holding up well. It does have PWM, but it's high enough that it doesn't typically bother my eyes unless I look at it all the time. That means it's flickering the display to control brightness, but pretty much above about 39%, the rate is high enough over 400 Hertz that it doesn't bother my eyes. So that flashing you can't see with your eyes, but it's actually happening. You just can't see it because it's high enough. Now the always on display, having used it for over six months at this point, I think it's nice, but I don't really need it. It's nice to be able to glance over at your phone, maybe if it's on a nightstand and see what the time is, or just look at it on a desk. But it's not something I think that's really incredible. It's a great feature to have there if you want it, but I think maybe with iOS 17 we'll get some more options for it or maybe future iOS versions. Now as far as the Dynamic Island, I've been using it for over six months at this point and I personally think it's nice. I like it better than the Notch personally. Not everybody does, but it's not something I would run out and buy the phone over. To me, it's just a nice place to see notifications. I don't really interact with it regularly, and I find that it's just nice to see things that are going up there. So if I swipe up in music, of course it's there. If we start maybe, I guess a timer here, we'll start that, it'll go up into the dynamic island. And it's just something that's really nice to have, but it's not a reason to run out and buy the phone by any means. So I think it's great, but most people that ask, I say, maybe you'll wanna wait and see if they add functionality with iOS 17 or future updates. It's really just a nice thing that's there as far as notifications. So maybe in the future it will add more, but being at the very top, it's hard to reach as well when you have your thumb down at the bottom of the phone. You can use reachability, but other than that, it's not something I would run out and buy it over. Now when it comes to the cameras, they're quite good, but there are a couple complaints. As far as their dependability, they're pretty dependable as far as video, and in fact, the Anchor ad in the earlier part of this video was completely filmed with this device. In fact, all of the shorts that I film, that I put on YouTube or different social media apps, I film with the 14 Pro. It's kind of my video camera phone, and it does a great job. It's dependable, and it just works. The autofocus is better than last year's, and everything just stays in focus really easily. The one complaint, though, is you can't get as close as you can as last year's iPhone, and that's because we have a 48 megapixel camera and a different lens setup. That's just a limitation of the lens itself because of the overall sensor. It's something Apple changed, so it's a physical thing that they can't change. However, the processing is the major complaint that they really do need to change. So overall photo processing, many have complained that it's just too dark, and sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. In this sort of lighting, it works fine, but typically when you snap a photo, sometimes it can be over-processed and then darker or just look a little different than what you see, and it's a little different than what we've had in the past from Apple. So we We've noticed that it seems to have gotten a little bit better with the latest updates, but Apple hasn't actually addressed it, so I really wish they would. Additionally, the HDR on this phone, if you're recording in HDR, whether, whether that's videos or cameras, I don't think is as good as last year's phone. I'm not sure what the processing difference is, but if you're using HDR, I typically would go back to an older phone because I just think it looks better. That's my personal taste, but not everyone may agree, but I think a lot of people would as far as that goes. I've seen a lot of people that just want the camera themselves or itself actually regret upgrading to this phone sometimes. So there's definitely some disappointments there that I really hope they address with software.
As far as overall durability of speakers, they have actually held up well. They haven't blown or anything like that. They're still working well. And as far as overall performance, well, it performs as you would expect. After all of the bugs were worked out with slowdowns of swiping into the dynamic island, like I showed earlier, that's been fixed, and now that it has, everything is super smooth. Some people do complain that ProMotion seems to be a little bit off or odd or slow from time to time, but I really see no issues. It seems to be 120 hertz, it does speed up and slow down, and seems to have gotten better with age. So that's something I think Apple's actually improved. Now as far as crash detection, I haven't really used it too much. I did have it trigger on my watch in an accident I was in. It worked well. Could have triggered on the phone, but it went to my watch. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but it does seem to work. Thankfully, I haven't had to use it much, and hopefully you don't either, but it seems to be a nice feature that's there. The same is true with satellite connectivity. So it's nice that we have it with SOS. If you don't have it connected to your SIM card or anything like that, you have the option. If you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need some help, you can get it. So it's great to have that option here. Now, as far as overall reception, well, it seems to be pretty good with the exception of some odd software bugs from time to time. Sometimes with previous updates, it would just go to SOS and you wouldn't have your connection to your carrier. It seems to have improved now, but depending on what version of software you're running, that can vary. So it seems like in general, it's quite good. Sometimes I do find that if you're on Wi-Fi calling, you have to turn that off in order for it to work. But again, that could be a carrier related or just related to overall software. But in general, it seems to be working pretty well as far as that goes. Now, when it comes to iOS, that's probably its weakest point as far as iPhones go at all right now. While I do believe Apple will improve it with iOS 17, iOS 16 hasn't been great for many of us. It has, however, seemed to be getting better slowly, like I mentioned before. The nice thing is, at least with the 14 Pro and Pro Max, we well, should have at least five years of total support bringing us to about iOS 20 or 21, or maybe even more. So that's great. We'll have support for years. We'll get the updates. Of course, if they implement new features, whether that's cameras or more, we won't get those. But in general, we'll get the major updates with the phone. Now, if you're wondering if you should buy the 14 Pro, maybe you're wondering if you should get the Pro Max. Well, I typically recommend the 14 Pro as long as the main concern isn't the screen size or overall battery life. Other than those two things, I would get the 14 Pro over the 14 Pro Max just due to its overall size and comfort and use, especially if you don't have huge hands like I do. This is just due to overall handling. One-handed use for me and overall comfort is just really great on this phone and it makes me want to use it full time. So if you need a larger screen or care most about battery life, well then of course get the Max. Otherwise, this is the one to get. So let me know your thoughts about the 14 Pro after six months. I still think it's a great phone and it will get supported for many, many years. I'm not sure if it's worth upgrading to the 15 Pro. We'll have to wait and see. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.